Hi, and welcome back to the workshop. Today we're going to continue the series from yesterday where we created the plans for the mini clock. I do need to make one correction from yesterday's video. When we were creating the pattern, the diameter of the circle that we used to uh, insert the mini clock, I stated it, it was 1.4375. The correction should be 1.375 is the actual size of the fit up. And that will use a 1 and 3 8 inch Forstner bit to cut that out. Once we get to that part in the video, I'll show you the mistake and how to correct it. I will correct it on the plans before I upload them to the website. So the plans that you download should be correct. Okay, the materials we're going to need for this project today are the choice of whatever species of material you want to use. In this case, I'm going to use cherry. I'm going to use cherry for both the clock and the clock base. Um, I generally make these out of scrap materials in the workshop, just whatever I have around that will fit. In this case, um, I'm using cherry that's probably about 3 eighths of an inch thick. I would normally use about 1 half inch thickness for this project, but uh, this will be good enough for what we're doing today, just as a demonstration. I have one piece half inches and another piece that's seven inches by about two and a quarter inches. This will be for the clock and the clock base. You'll also as always need the clear box tape. In this case the downloadable pattern off of the website. I have a one and three eighths inch Forstner bit to uh, drill the hole for the insert and I have a one and seven sixteenths inch uh, mini clock insert that you can purchase off the web. First step as always is to cut the pattern into pieces. In this case we only have two pieces to cut out. I have the pattern pieces cut to size. I'm going to go ahead and spray them with the all-purpose uh, spray adhesive just like we used in the other videos. You might want to consider the, the pattern of the grain of the wood when you apply the pattern to the wood. Uh, you might find one particular direction that the uh, the pattern looks better than the other. Just like in the previous videos, I'm going to cover the pattern in clear box tape. Again, the box tape helps lubricate the scroll saw blade, cuts down on burning of the wood, and especially in this cherry, it's a really good idea. Cherry really has a tendency to want to burn. Okay, I have the pattern completely covered in the clear box tape and we're going to take these pieces to the drill press and drill them out. This time it's going to be a little different from just drilling all the entry holes. We have to drill the uh, hole for the clock insert and to do that job we're going to use the Forstner bit. I've chucked up our 1 and 3 8 inch Forstner bit. I've centered it over the uh, opening for the clock insert. Carefully centered it. I'm going to go ahead and drill this out. If I were using one half inch wood, I would probably not drill all the way through. In this case, with the 3 8 inch piece, I probably will go ahead and take it all the way through. I have removed the Forstner bit and went ahead and chucked up the, one of the smallest drill bits I have. I'm going to go ahead and drill all the entry holes for the blade, just like we've done in the previous videos. Okay, we've got our pieces drilled up and we're ready to go to the scroll saw. Okay, I'm getting ready to start the scrolling project. Again, I'm going to use a Flying Dutchman blade, uh, number 5, 13 teeth per inch, reverse teeth blade. Same blades I use for almost all these small scroll saw projects. I'm going to go ahead and insert the blade into our wood and we'll get ready to start cutting. Okay, I've stopped this cut here because I want to show you something that if you're new to scroll sawing, uh, it's one of the first obstacles that you'll need to learn to overcome. If you'll notice what I have here, I have my blade parallel to the scroll saw arm in this direction, and if you'll notice, the wood is actually at an angle. That's because all scroll saws cut at a slight angle. Now, after you've used your saw for a while, you'll begin to get the feel for this and it won't be such an obstacle but at first a couple of the tips that you might want to look for is you can actually move your chair 
a little bit to the right side of the blade so as you're pushing the wood you'll feel like you're pushing straight. In this case while I'm cutting I'm going to be pushing at a slight angle. Got the base cut and now we're ready to move on to the main body of the clock. Okay I've got the main body of the clock uh, penetrated with the blade and I'm going to show you another tip that if you're new to scroll sawing uh, it might be valuable for you. In this case, case I'm going to cut this small piece out which is the intersection of the two wings which is basically a small triangle. Um, now in this particular case it probably wouldn't make a whole lot of difference but one thing I can do to avoid having uh, jaggy edges on the straight lines of this piece is I can always begin my cut in one of the corners. So I'm going to move the blade into this corner, make the turn, and move out. And that way I can finish in that corner also and have a nice clean piece to cut out. And we'll begin the cut. Once I get to that corner, just rotate the piece, begin to cut in the other direction, again rotate the piece, and you can slightly move the wood back against the back side of the blade and use the back side of the blade as a pivot point. Continue that leg, make the cut, again biasing the wood towards the back piece of the, of the blade to give it something to rotate again. Once I finish that cut, I can slightly turn the blade and pop the piece out. Okay, I'm going to continue to cut this pattern out. Uh, a couple more tips is if your scroll saw has a blower, uh, use it. Keep the lines clear of the sawdust. You'll have a much easier time following the lines. Try to stay relaxed while you cut. Uh, don't don't uh, press down so hard onto the wood trying to hold it down that you actually you know make your cuts more difficult. You'll notice in this case I've taken the foot, the safety foot off. Um, I don't cut with the foot. The, the manufacturers put those foot those feet on there for your safety. I have had the wood jump up and come down and smash my finger a little bit and yeah it does hurt and it does help keep you away from the blade a little bit. Use your own discretion if you feel like you need the foot especially when you first start start, start out scrolling go ahead and use it. Okay I'm going to go ahead and cut this piece out and again as you're cutting try to stay as relaxed as possible. This is not a race. You don't have to be in a hurry. I don't cut fast. There's people out there that can cut fast and accurate. I'm not one of them. So I just take my time and I enjoy it as a hobby, which is what it is to me. If you're trying to make production pieces and you're fat cutting, uh, speed might be more important to you. Uh, but for me, I just enjoy cutting. Okay, we're back over at the workbench and I have our pieces cut out, our base and our clock body. Made a couple modifications to the pattern since the last video. I did go ahead and add a limb here to try to uh, fill up this negative space a little bit just to add a little bit uh, more aesthetic value to the pattern. I'm going to go ahead and give it a bath in some lemon oil to bring out the highlight of the grain. Uh, we'll let that dry for just a few minutes, glue it up, put the clock insert in and we'll be ready to go. Okay, here we have our finished clock. Um, applied a little lemon oil to it just to bring out the luster of this cherry wood. As this wood ages, it'll get darker and uh, make this a very attractive clock. If you would like to check out this free pattern, it's www.scrollsawworkshop.blogspot.com. Go ahead and log on to the website. You can download this free pattern. Thanks for watching the video, and we'll see you in the next one.